Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Kansas City, Missouri. At first glance, you might think, ugh, looks pretty run down. Well, it is, kinda, but not for long. This is the West Bottoms neighborhood of Kansas City. All of this used to be an industrial area immediately west of downtown where a lot of the stockyards and factories stood. Of course, we don't need stockyards and factories like we used to. Times have changed. This whole part of downtown's getting a big facelift these days. They're putting in shops and restaurants and even condos down here. Come back in a year and it's gonna look way different down on this end of town, partner. We're gonna see a lot of that while driving around Kansas City, Missouri. This place has a lot of energy and enthusiasm and progress. And that makes it worth talking about. Missouri is not a very fun place. Bright here in KC things aren't bad. Forget that crappy song. It's time for a real knee slapping good time. Right now we're in the newly remodeled Power and Light District in downtown Kansas City. Right here in the heart of downtown, they've built this concert venue, which has a bunch of fun restaurants and bars inside of it. It's a great place to watch a show. Because it's here, a lot of people come downtown now. Look at that line, everyone. That's Chase Rice. I was here for his concert in late July. It's part of KCMO's Hot Country Night Thursday Concert Series. Look at all these people having a good time. It's safe and very well run. You can't say that about a lot of concert venues these days anymore, can you? This is only one part of the $850 million Power and Light District. You could say it's completely transformed downtown. They say it's one of the largest and most exciting entertainment developments in the Midwest. This venue is just one example of the new Kansas City. You'll see stuff like this all over town now these days. Kansas City, Missouri's been working hard to get more exciting and clean up its act. And you can tell. I was here in Kansas City for three days. The first two were at the beginning of the trip, and I kind of already talked about KCMO a little bit in another video. But I came back here on my final day after I left St. Joseph, a small aging city an hour the north. And let me tell you, this is not what I expected. You don't hear a lot of people outside of the Midwest praising Kansas City very much. I had expected an aging city with a lot of crime. Well, the crime is bad, but the aging part isn't. We're going to begin our tour of Kansas City in the early morning on a random Friday. Kansas City seems pretty sleepy in the early morning hours, but in a good way. There isn't a lot of traffic and noise and yelling and trash. It's just chill. If you like quiet, this is quiet. You can walk around this part of downtown and not really be bothered. I have to say, if this was on the West Coast, there would be homeless people in every nook and cranny. You do see homeless people here, but not many. At least, I didn't see very many of them. So right off the bat, it feels pretty safe in this part of town. Kansas City's population has been pretty stagnant for the past few decades, and for a while there, it was actually going down. But look, more and more people are moving here lately, and there's almost a half million people here again. Actually, there's more people in Kansas City now than ever before. Across the state over in St. Louis, that's not happening. St. Louis is losing people. KC's been working really hard to fix things up. There's an energy in downtown that you can feel when you're here. All over town you see construction, and bringing in big concert venues like this has really sparked new growth all over downtown. I noticed all of this while walking around my little section of downtown the first morning I was here. I asked a guy at a local park about it. What do you think about Kansas City? It's alright. It's okay. Kansas City is okay. Uh, 
it has its moments of, uh, well, it's new migrating. <clears throat> Things are migrating they, uh, from the south, from Indiana. And new, new, new more people coming through. And I don't know. It's cleaner than it used to be. And that's about it. I already showed you the improvements happening over in the West Bottoms area downtown. That was good to see. Up here on the north end of town is the city's River Market District. It too is getting a big boost with all these new places to hang out and live. Kansas City was late to the game when it came to downtown city living since most of the growth had been taking place in the burbs. But that's changing now. They're even building luxury apartments in pockets of downtown like this. And they're actually getting leased. Just south of the Power and Light District is Midtown, otherwise known as the Crossroads District. There's a lot of artsy stuff here and new condos springing up in this part of town too. They're putting in new bike lanes and fixing the sidewalks and adding greenery. It all looks much nicer, but the cost of living here is going up too. And this is the Westport neighborhood down on the south end of town. This is getting more and more exciting down here too, with new places to live and hang out. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of enthusiasm on the Missouri side of the river compared to boring old KCK. All these pockets are gentrifying. That's good if you like things getting fixed up. It's bad if you used to live here. And it's worth noting that there have been a lot of shootings here on the south side of Kansas City in this Westport part of town. Lots of them. And that brings us to the crime. It can't be all glowing here. In another video, I took you through the worst hoods of Kansas City. Most of the dangerous section of town is here in what's kind of the south central part of town. Anything along Troost and Prospect and in between is where most of the criminals lurk. People here blame the problems on decades of redlining. I say it's just stupid people who need Jesus. I drove around these areas, and I was kind of impressed at how much Kansas City's been cleaning up this part of town. A lot of the rundown and vacant homes have been demolished, and along main streets, there's signs of gentrification. The hard lines that separated the rich and poor down here are blurring. Some of the troublemakers that were here have been forced into cheaper housing across the river in Kansas City, Kansas, or into nearby burbs. Sorry if you live there and you have to absorb them. It's not fun when they show up. It might look a lot better, but they don't act a lot better. Crime-wise, it's still really bad here. Kansas City ranks 8th in the country for violent crime per capita. And it's getting worse, just like it is in other major cities. Some people call this place Killa City. Get it? KC? Killa City? You can see right here that two other cities in Missouri are in the top 10 for crime. <laughs> you do not want to be on this list. I'll tell you that. I visited an Aldi's just four blocks from downtown. They have a fully armed security guard there, and I had somebody ask me for money inside of Aldi's. I don't know if I've ever been panhandled in the bread aisle before, but when I see a fully armed security guard patrolling the grocery store aisles, I usually leave. And I did. So yes, crime here is bad, even though the city wants to pretend it's getting better. As it stands, the murder rate here is almost six times higher than the U.S. average, and robberies are four times higher than the nation's average. Not good. Not fun. It's too bad we have to use up so much time in this video talking about the a-holes. Did you know that every day 316 people are shot by a gun in America? That's not that many, Mappy. That's like six per state. What's the solution to gun violence anyway, Mr. Know-it-all? Less guns, but you're not taking away my guns. I'll take your guns away if I want to. It's my channel. Hey! Outside of the downtown core, there's other cool stuff going on. The north side of town's improving. There's some restaurants and some new places to live up here, but it's also mostly fairly industrial. A lot of the successful people wind up settling in the southern burbs in Jackson County. Cities like Lee Summit, Raymore, and Belton are growing fast. Just quiet, sleepy suburbs on the edge of farmland. For now. While out and about in Kansas City, Missouri, I did a lot. I already showed you the concert at the Power and Light District. That was off the chain. It was a great night for a concert. I was at the Chase Rice show, 
but I heard that Marin Morris and Cheryl Crow also had concerts in town the same night. WTF, KCMO. You guys bring all the kids to the yard. Walking around downtown at night, it can be kind of quiet or kind of sketch, depending on what events are going on. There's some combination of shootings, stabbings, assaults, or robberies down here practically every weekend. They gotta clean that up. I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, at the Holiday Inn. This is Peggy. She's the cook at the Holiday Inn Express where I stayed during my trip. What a sweet lady. I wish I could take her home with me. I mean, who sings to people at breakfast time? She needs a raise. Someone give Peggy a raise. I went to the Crane Brewery on the south side in Raytown. Great beer, great people. I highly recommend it. Of course, I had to check out the sports stadiums. The Royals and Chiefs both have stadiums on the fringes of the metro area. Chiefs fans are very nice and very loud. I know that firsthand. Now, of course, while in Kansas City, I had to try the barbecue. Come on now. This place is known nationwide for its barbecue. I tried both the best and worst rated barbecue in Kansas City. This is Joe's Kansas City barbecue. It's supposedly the best around. And it is good. Real good. Now, this place is ranked as the worst barbecue in the Kansas City area, at least according to Google reviews. But I wanted to see what bad barbecue looked like, and if it's even possible. Is there such a thing as bad barbecue? What kind of presentation is that? Yuck. Uh, yes. Yes, there is. I could have made this myself, and I waited 20 minutes for it at a not busy time of day. I'm pretty sure the comment section is going to light up with people arguing about where the best barbecue in town is. Have at it. And at long last, it's time for the final Casey's Pizza reveal. I know you've all been paying attention during the entire length of this road trip. Casey's is a huge deal in the Midwest, and their pizzas are a big part of the Midwestern diet. I've been sampling a Casey's Pizza in every state along the way to see which state makes the best Casey's Pizzas. And now it's time to sample Missouri's Casey's Pizza to see how it shapes up. And it's really good. Like, really good, but maybe just a teeny bit too greasy? I'd give Missouri a close second place. So that means Nebraska wins the Nick Johnson Casey's Pizza Challenge. Yay! I expect a Casey's Pizza at my doorstep any day now. Please. Casey's? Hello? Kansas City's a nice place. It's improving here, and you can't say that about a lot of cities in America. There's still a lot of work to do here, and as more people move in, they're going to have to figure out the crime. Young idiots with guns should be sent far, far away from here. There's parts of the Midwest that are being held hostage by a small percentage of stupid, worthless people. Is Kansas City better than St. Louis? Perhaps a little bit. I think so. So, that was it. The big Midwest trip is over. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. We saw a lot, didn't we? Small towns with wonderful people, big cities on the move, and a lot of corn. You might be surprised, but there's a lot of people that are looking to move here, and there just aren't enough houses for them. As I flew out of Kansas City, I looked out across the same cornfields I had seen 17 days prior. I came here to talk about good things and to experience a Midwest summer one more time. I planned the trip to test my theory that the Midwest is the last best affordable place to live in this country. I think the theory was proven, and I'm at peace with that. And I don't think a lot of people here even really truly appreciate how wonderful it is here. All the corn love I feel for you It's all the cool skies you make so blue Now I'm leaving So sad I'm sitting right here Casey's on my mind I wish that I could take you too Wish you could have come 
It's a tragedy for me to see that the trip is over And I never will forget the days we get Midwest, I'm gonna miss you no, it's just about Kansas City. I just want to have just a just an informal conversation about Kansas City. Um, I was there for three days. I really like Kansas City. I did not think I was going to like Kansas City. I didn't know what to expect. I, I think a lot of people that don't live there don't really know much about Kansas City. I think we hear that it's dangerous and it's in the Midwest, and really that's all that we really know. But it's it's actually a neat place, and, and it looks like it's getting better, and it's changing and growing and everything. Yeah, um, there's been a, like a big boom of people wanting to come here, spend time here. Um, and like even with what I was just doing, there's a lot of Airbnbs popping up um, near our downtown area, our plaza area, um, kind of just making it more accessible for people traveling as well to kind of have access to being close to those attractions that we have here in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what are people saying about how it's changing? I got the impression that... It, they're fixing the place up. I, I was told that there were going to be some really trashy areas on the South central kind of part of town by truce and prospect and like all mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. I, dro I drove around there. It, it looks like they've taken a lot of that crap out of there. It looks better. It, it's just seems and all over town is construction. It just feels like a city on the move to me. It, it definitely is. I think that progressively Kansas city is trying um, I know there's been talk about like wanting to bring more professional sports teams here. Um, our mayor has been doing a lot of really big things. We had a, a mayor conference that was held in Kansas city for the first time in a really long time, which is really cool that we're getting, you know, a lot of important people that come through here, hopefully to talk more about doing those changes, but there's constantly construction. Um, and they build a lot of really nice, like high rise apartments, townhomes, stuff like that downtown that you necessarily wouldn't think is nice. But then you go inside and you're really taken back because they keep the historical outside, you know, and then you go in and it's completely renovated, modern, super cool. Yeah. And I hear a lot of them are actually getting leased. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people people want to live here. I mean, I don't necessarily live like in the downtown part of town. It's just a little bit more expensive, but they're able to make it more expensive now um, because it's not as trashy as people would think. It's a nice place to live. There's a lot of, um, it really feels like a city. You walk and there's a lot of shops open, different things, antiques, you know, yarn, anything you could think of. And the food, I'd say Kansas City has really good food. Yeah, I, I I tried the barbecue. Of course, I had to try the barbecue. It's really good. Um, clearly. But we're so much more than just barbecue, for sure. What are you that? What else, what other food is Kansas City? I mean, for? I would say we we're such a melting pot because we are the Midwest. So like we have some really good like small like Mexican restaurants that are super authentic. Um, we have multiple like Asian markets where you can you know go get those kind of foreign cultural food items that you wouldn't necessarily think that you know, you could find at your local store. So that's somewhere I frequent pretty often is like the Mexican grocery store and like an Asian market because I like to try different things. And I think it's super cool that they have that, you know, here for everyone to go and shop at. Yeah. Well, you said it's expensive downtown or more expensive. What What is expensive for Kansas City? I'm curious to know what you guys think is expensive because I guarantee you it's going to be very affordable compared to most big cities. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Um, well, I'm, like I said, I'm not downtown, but, um, where I live, it's like $900 a month for one bedrooms. So, and then, you know, the location and everything that factors in it, it only really goes up from there. If you, especially, you know, with more space and stuff like that, even in those kind of more, what you would think would be urban areas, so, okay, so $900 a month is not very expensive. I clearly right. you know that. Um, are you guys worried that the cost of living, because I know you want your city to improve and it's fun to see things grow and to have people moving there, but like that's going to mean more people are going to move there. That means the cost of living is going to go up, I guess. Um, is that something you guys talk about? Um, I mean, it definitely, it's something that's come about, uh, especially since we've had a lot of McDonald's around here that are offering $15 an hour and that, to a lot of um, like adults 
people, peers I speak with, you know, they're like, man, that's crazy. I can't imagine when I worked at McDonald's, you know, it was $6 an hour. And I know times have changed, but hopefully um, our city doesn't see too much inflation just because even making $15 an hour, I don't know how people make ends meet. You know what I mean? Yeah. $900 a month for apartment. I mean, if you make $15 an hour, it's tough. No, yeah. for sure. Um, but um, it's really prevalent around here. Uh, we have a lot of food banks. I feel like our community is like super invested in like trying to help um, each other. And there's always some kind of drive going on. And uh, even with like school supplies and back to school, a lot of different resources and outlets for all the people here in Kansas City, which I love things like that. That makes me really happy that, you know, people are able to get those things that they need. Yeah. I mean, I, what's the bad? There's got to be bad. There's not no cities, you know, there's I know the crime is bad there. I guess. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, be- no place is perfect. I I mean, I wish it was sunny all year round here and 75. But um, no, we do. We have a lot of um, people who use hard drugs. You know, we'll see a lot of um, homeless people on the street, uh, things like that, even in the more what you would think were suburban areas, but I feel like combatively, maybe Kansas City might be leaning more towards being like Oregon or Washington, just because um, here, even in the last couple months, I've noticed a lot of um, like billboards on the side of the road saying like, if you're going to use, use a clean needle and um, this and that. So I think we might be trying to, I don't know, help that situation in whatever way, you know, our, immediate government here in Kansas city sees fit. Hmm. Yeah. You don't want those problems. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's a double-edged sword. I don't want to see people, you know, messed up and getting hurt on the street and using bad stuff, but I also don't want to enable that kind of behavior. Um, I, I think Kansas city could definitely use like a big rehab facility. Uh, what one point we were like, I believe the meth capital of the world. So oh. there's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of drug use here for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know if you knew it's like considered technically the eighth most dangerous place in the country. I did not know that until I started digging into the numbers. I mean, St. Louis and Springfield are also um, dangerous, but yeah. um, I, I think what are they, are they trying to figure that out? I know it's, there's no easy answer except lock people in jail. Um, I mean, yeah, there's really, like I said, with the drugs, I feel like the drug problem really goes hand in hand with the crime. If there wasn't so much drug use and, you know, those kind of issues going on here, I feel like our city would be a lot, you know, cleaner, brighter place. But, you know, like you said, there's good and bad in every town and no place is perfect. But it is um, something that I would like to see, you know, because I do every day on my drive, I see probably 10 to 15 homeless people on on the street and it, it does it makes me sad but i guess that's kind of part of big city living as well just my experience visiting other big cities there's always a homeless epidemic mm-hmm. you have you don't have it nearly as bad as a lot of places i've been to though um really i i mean i saw a few people i walked around i drove around a lot i didn't see i mean you, if you go out to the west coast there's tents everywhere um I saw a few people kind of in your downtown area, but you, you have no, nothing to, to compare to what it's like in, in some of the worst places. So, yeah, no, I mean, I couldn't imagine. And I, like I said, I, I drive by and I, I feel terrible. Um, I wish we did have a better program. It sounds like nationwide we could use some kind of homeless outreach system, but yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, is, how's the job scene there? Are it, I, if the city's growing, does that are there a lot of companies that are moving there? And is oh, that thing? I mean, I'm not specifically sure about companies like moving here or making it a point to be here, but I know just in my own experience looking for a job that there is an endless supply of work. Um, just finding the people who are going to be showing up on time and consistent, I think is a lot of employers problem because I mean, indeed online, you go to the store, they have the old school board. I mean, there's always something posted somewhere about people needing 
someone to come and do some work. So mm -hmm. uh, the problem is a lot of people just don't want to work. That's the problem. There's plenty of jobs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the the uh, we I, I stayed near the Power and Light district and mm -hmm. I went to the KC Thursday night concert series thing. Um, I saw Chase Rice play. I was told that Marin Morris and Cheryl Crow were also in town that night on a random Thursday. There's all these big acts. I I did not think Kansas City was going to bring it like that. I was I was very I mean, impressed by that. I will say like concerts and stuff like that. We do we get a lot of artists that like come through here and. Um, I mean, it's not like a vacation destination by any means, but it is, it's a cool place and it does have a lot of like things that you wouldn't expect. You wouldn't, like you say, you look up Kansas City and you think like, oh, danger, Midwest, flyover state, but there is a lot of, there's a lot of cool stuff to do. And just locally, I feel like there's always, there's a lot of creative people in Kansas City. There's always an art walk or, um, we have first Fridays, um, once a month on the first Friday of the month where people go and they look at art and they can purchase it. And it's really cool. I feel like it's a good place to be creative at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all the different neighborhoods look like, like that Westport neighborhood, the river district. Is that mm -hmm. it's yeah. The um, river market area. So that's beautiful. Yeah. All of that stuff looks like it's fairly new. What was that just, not used and kind of not as nice back in the day. Um, and the river, the river market is open. It's, I believe it's open all year round, but it's more popular in the summer and spring because they have a lot of like outdoor stands and stalls where you can go through and purchase things kind of like a farmer's market. Um, and they always have like the best produce down there. I, I just, I thought that was neat. I could see even on the West bottoms area, it looks like they're fixing all that up. I, I just, saw a lot of stuff that looks like it's, it's improving. And I think that's great. Uh, the whole point, uh, the whole reason I went on this trip was to show people that the Midwest is a great place to live. And I really do think it's one of the best places to live. One of the last good places to live. That's, that's affordable. And, uh, you know, Omaha, Des Moines, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and then Kansas city, Missouri. I'm like, these are great places that are, that are, that just don't get a lot of credit for being what they are, which is a nice place to live and, and uh, affordable and, and just great people. Yeah. I mean, I, of course you always run into the good and the bad. Um, I would say people are probably the worst here in traffic. We get a lot of like road ragers, but I've been at the Walmart, you know, trying to put together a trash can and had two people come up and try to help me. And it's no lack of, friendly faces for sure. Um, and people have that kind of Midwestern nosiness to them. They're like, Oh, what's going on? Like you need some help, you know? Hmm. So they're always willing and I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. What what kind of person would thrive in Kansas city? Like what's it like to live there for someone that doesn't live there from your experience? Um, like I said, definitely. I feel like it's a good place for creative people. Um, there's a lot of art scene um, that goes on here. And even music, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily think because not too many big artists have really emerged from this area, but there's a lot of like local talent that's constantly showcasing themselves. So I'd say like any kind of creative person would do really well. Um, we're kind of moving more towards that like hipster cool try to feel, you know, like if you go downtown, it's very, you, you kind of get the vibe. Um, and I think a lot of people could fit in and enjoy that. And it would give them a sense of like, it reminds them of home wherever their home may be, even mm -hmm. though it's not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. What about politics? What's the political scene there? Like, um, I mean, you definitely do. You do see Confederate flags sometimes. Um, not necessarily like downtown KC, but you get into the more rural parts of the area. But I would say, I mean, I've never, I've never come across anyone that was very like openly political, even in the last couple of years when we had the election and I was here. Um, everyone is pretty modest when it comes to politics. I feel like we're not, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like, you don't talk about politics. You don't talk about how much money you make, you know, kind of thing like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how it is in Raleigh, North Carolina, too. It's very apolitical, and I like that because 
do whatever you want. It's your Nobody business. Cares. Yeah. There's yeah. no need for us to, you know, spew hate at each other because we have different opinions. Everyone's yeah. got an opinion. So, yeah. I think that it's better than um, I don't think you guys fully appreciate what you guys have there. Oh yeah. Uh, that, that, yeah, because there's a lot of problems in the, in the world and in the country and it's so expensive and it's so yeah. crowded and people are angry and there's crime and um, just, there's just a holes everywhere. And um, th- there's that. not a lot of places that are, as, as uh, lovely as the Midwest. So you guys, I don't think the, for those people that, that have grown up in the Midwest that don't travel a lot, they don't quite understand how good they have it. I don't think that. They haven't uh, had the opportunity to see how like East and West coast are in comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One final question, Casey's pizza. So a lot of people have never been to a Casey's that don't live in the Midwest. We don't have them in the South. I wish we did. Um, oh my gosh. Casey's pizza is the best. If, if you're looking for like hot, fast food, better than Seven Eleven, better than um, little Caesars. It's just good. It's, it's good pizza and it's cheap and it's almost always like ready for you to pick up and take with you. So, yeah, I, I think that like, uh, um, it's a big part of uh, the Midwesterners diet. Yeah, for sure. We're, we're gas station place for sure. Um, quick trip is very popular here. We have a quick trip on almost every single corner. Um, but in competition, Casey's does have the best pizza around. So I don't see them going anywhere. But yeah, we do have a lot of gas stations. I will say you'll never be short of gas here in Kansas City. Casey's Pizza. Is yes. it not the best thing? It is. Eat? It's one of the best things. But yes, it's pretty tasty. What's better than Casey's Pizza? Um, Gates Barbecue. Okay. You think you think Gates barbecue is better than Casey's pizza? Yeah. I bet if I asked ten Midwest people and I had a Casey's pizza on one side and Gates barbecue on the other, I bet you like eight out of ten would pick Casey's pizza. Okay, you're probably right about that. Yeah. You worded that. Yeah, that was Yeah, the Casey's pizza is really good. Why is Casey's pizza so good? I don't know. The dough? Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.